What's good, y'all? It's Boy Ross back at again with another video. I'm literally just finishing up the live stream reactions of Backlash with the homies, Steve and uh, Dub, man. Uh, great show. Great show. I enjoyed the show. Man, that last match took me out. <laughs> I ain't got no energy. This entire show pretty much drained me of the energy i had because it was it was pretty great top to bottom um this was this was fun this was a great backlash it's it's great to say that backlash is usually a b tier sometimes c tier pay-per-view on the wwe calendar but this year they showed out and i can appreciate what the show uh, what they brought to the show um got to give my thoughts and opinions on this uh ple or pay-per-view however you want to call it and it was a good show and first thing i gotta put out there the mvp of the entire night the puerto rican crowd you guys were amazing you guys were amazing on smackdown but tonight i'll give y'all a round of applause y'all showed out almost every single match y'all gave y'all energy to and i appreciate y'all y'all were hot the entire night y'all made this show that much better because of y'all interaction because of the energy you guys gave the performers out there you guys were fantastic and i hope wwe goes back to puerto rico soon because you guys y'all showed up y'all showed up and i am very very thankful that i was able to watch this live and to see that energy you guys were bringing so they are the real mvps of the show let's first and foremost so I'll shout out to all the puerto ricans out there that showed out tonight you guys were amazing so we're gonna start with the opening match and boy this was a hot one bianca belair versus eo sky now here's what made this and i knew tonight was gonna be a great night this re the way the crowd responded to both of these ladies were fantastic but specifically for eo because i think this is the first time and you can correct me if i'm wrong but i think this is the first time since bianca has been on the main roster that she has gotten booed like this she was in a sense the heel in this match and everyone was pro eo sky i'm talking about the crowd went crazy for eo they were chanting eo she is a heel technically and they wanted her to win so bad every wind up of a move they're hitting a whoa with the crescendo they anytime she hit a big move the crowd would pop crazy anytime bianca would hit a big move the crowd would boom it was crazy to see that dynamic and it's very interesting to see what they do with that but it was it was just one of those things where it was like I, it was, it you knew something was going to happen here in the sense of story development and maybe character development. Maybe EO ends up turning face after this because that reaction she got was fantastic. Now, it's going to be interesting to see if she gets that same type of reaction in the States going forward. They may have something here. But tonight, she was the biggest baby face in that arena and it was fantastic to see they showed out they put on a great showing great match back and forth eo showing why he she deserved to be in that title opportunity contention and she showed out i, I got glimpses of nxt eo it was fantastic i loved it they worked the story was working on one of bianca's arms early in the match so she pretty much was you know out there fighting eo with one arm and in fact she did like this press like this bench press of sorts like she had eo and she had her hold it held up with one arm and she kind of dropped her and looked like she accidentally dropped her uh like i don't think eo rotation it looked like eo landed on her neck head region but the fact that she held her up with one arm shows the testament to how strong bianca is now the interesting part of this i had a feeling bailey and uh dakota kai was gonna were going to get involved and the story they're telling here is basically, and you've been seeing it for weeks, that EO wants to kind of do her own thing. He, she feels like, you know, she's being held back by Bianca. I mean, not by Bianca, by Bailey or whatnot. Bailey and Dakota, she feels like she's being held back. And that's what they were announcing on commentary. Michael Cole alluding to that. And when they came out, ultimately, you would think that it would have helped EO. But no, in fact, 
uh, at one point, uh, Bailey's holding uh, Bianca's uh, braid outside the ring, but trying to hide it, and the ref sees it. Eo's on the top rope, so she's about to do her move onto Bianca, and it caused a kind of delay because now the ref is like, "Yo, let go of her hair," which gave Eo enough time, gave Bianca enough time to counter that and get the win. So basically, Bailey inadvertently cost Eo the match, and I think that's the story they're going with. I think the story is. EO is going to break away from damage control because she wants to kind of get her own kind of get her own momentum, which I'm okay with. Honestly, I think Elo going as a solo act would be uh um would be something that I think would uh be beneficial to her. So I think they should go with that route. And um um I'm interested to see what happens going forward and you know what story is gonna progress. Cause I'm sure EO is not just gonna be able to leave the group. So I can see EO maybe having a fat, uh, match with Dakota and having a match with Bailey to finally separate herself from damage control. So it's going to be interesting to see. But the crowd was not happy, but Bianca did retain, which I expected. It will be interesting to see if they run it back and maybe give EO the rub. We will see. But overall, great way to start off the show. Great match, in my opinion. All right, so next match, Omos versus Seth Rollins. I, I I really didn't care for this match leading up to it. I didn't think it needed to be on the show, but it's here. Um, the best thing about this, obviously, Seth Rollins' entrance. Crowd was already hot. They just kept singing his song. Then, you know, Omos is already out there. Seth is drinking it in, man. And then he just gets kicked in the head by Omos and they start off the match. And I will say this. In my opinion, this is probably the best match Omos has had on the main roster. And honestly... Seth did his thing on carrying him. Now, granted, Omos did have some decent moves, you know, in the sense of showing his, you know, his strength and his ability as a big guy. But Seth made Omos look that much better. The the, the spot where Seth going for the stump and Omos not, you know, you know, pretty much standing his ground and Seth couldn't hit the stump. Um, it even got to the point where, you know, Seth is selling, overselling on, like, not overselling, but over-rotating on big hits and big moves. Like, I can appreciate that. And he got some good heel heat because his crowd was hot. So, the heat he got was fantastic. I do appreciate that. Um, you know, him getting some type of a reaction because normally he doesn't really get too much of a reaction like that. So, it was good to see that. And it took three curb stomps. One curb stomp didn't get it done. Another curb stomp didn't get it done. So my man, Seth, had to hit a super curb stump from the top rope to put down Omos, which obviously they're trying to make as a big threat. And the match was over. One, two, three. Glad they were straight to the point. Didn't need to overdo it. It was a decent match. I don't want to see it no more, but it was okay. Serviceable, in my opinion, best match Omos has had on the main roster. Seth Rollins doing his thing to make Omos look as good as possible, but still come out on top. So, and you know, serviceable, nothing too crazy. All right, uh, Austin Theory versus Bronson Reed versus Bobby Lashley. Now, in my opinion, I, I will say this, that um, I thought Bobby was going to get the win here, but no, they gave it to Austin Theory, and it's more or less what we've seen with Theory. Theory, his, his run has been capitalizing on situations. Not really getting the win off of just his skill alone, but just capitalizing on situations. You know, and the match was fun. It was it's not something that I would go back and watch again. It was it was it was enjoyable. Once again, the crowd made this match even better, especially when they start trading moves and and finishers back and forth. Uh, I'm not gonna go into great detail, but Bo uh, Bobby Lashley had ended up hitting uh Bronson Reed with a beautiful ass spear, beautiful spear. But then he was able to roll out Bobby Lashley as he went for the pin and Austin Theory ended up hitting the pin. Ended up getting the pin, man. And I think uh, Bronson Reed had went for like a, a moonsault. He missed it. Got up. Got I believe got hit with the spear. And then Austin Theory capitalized. Boom. And got the, the easy quick pin. One, two, three. And I get it. He's a heel, so it's supposed to happen like that. But I would like to see Austin Theory as a heel. Get him a nice, clean win. Gunther is a heel, ladies and gentlemen. He is a heel. And Guther can win matches without help. And that's the type of heel. I'm, you, it's good to have the chicken shit heel. It's good to have the heel that cheats. 
It's always good to have those. But I feel like Austin Theory could be a little bit better. I, I don't I don't think he has to be a chicken shit heel. I think he has a decent move set. He's good in the ring. I think giving him a clean win as a heel to talk trash, I think that could be good for him. So maybe they do that in the future. We will see. But Austin Theory ended up retaining. So we'll see what's next for him. Solid match. Wasn't that bad. Rhea Ripley versus Zelina Vega. Now we knew Zelina wasn't going to win. But I will say this. She put on a good match. I enjoyed the match that she had with Rhea. Rhea did her thing in making Zelina look like she could actually win. Her family, Zelina family was there. They mentioned her father who passed away uh, in the 9-11 attack, uh, attacks. Um, they mentioned that on commentary. The crowd was pro Zelina. It was just a fantastic moment for her. She's tearing up before the match started. It was beautiful. It was great. Of course, you, you know, I'm, I'm knowing they, she's not going to get the win. But they put on a solid, solid women's match, man. Uh, obviously, Rhea retained uh, uh, the women's championship. Um, but I will say this. I, there's one thing I can appreciate about Rhea. She's going to make you look good in the ring. She was selling her ass off of Zelina, and I appreciated that. But ultimately, Rhea ended up retaining as I expected. And Zelina got a very good crowd ovation, as she deserved. Very emotional. This was great. And hopefully, maybe, maybe we can see, maybe uh, Zelina get a, a potential push out of this. We will see. It all depends on how the American crowd re receives her. So, we will see how that goes in forward. But tonight in Puerto Rico, she was a star. If, if they would have pulled the trigger and had her win, the crowd would have just went insane. <laughs> so, but other than that, it was a decent match. Um... I, don't, I haven't seen too many Zelina matches, in my opinion. But this one, in, for me, it's, 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 it was a really, really good showing. And they, they made it work. And kudos to Rhea for having Zelina look strong, even in defeat. So, now this match here. Bad Bunny versus Damian Priest. Street fight match. This was fun. This was fucking fun. Some would say this may be matching the night, and I wouldn't be mad at you. This was fun. This was fun. That's what a street fight match should be. The crowd pro Bad Bunny came out there singing, singing his song. It was just fantastic. This this atmosphere was fantastic. This is I, I had fun with this. Bad Bunny has no right to be in no wrestling ring, but he is out there and. For his to be the second wrestling match, even though it was a street fight, he held his own. He took some spots. I love that. Oh, bro, that 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 move he took from the production production area was fantastic. The fact that Bad Bunny took that bump was great, bro. This is him and Damian Priest. They work well. They work well together. Damian Priest talking his trash, but you knew Bad Bunny. He's not a wrestler. So, Bad Bunny's not out here giving out beats, you know what I'm saying, without weapons and stuff. Like, you know, Bad Bunny, you know what I'm saying, he has to be more smarter in how he attacks Damian Priest because, well, Damian Priest is a wrestler. He does this. So, it was just one of those things where it's like it was it was good to see that... Um, that they didn't overdo it. Because sometimes you can get in a situation where they have a celebrity. And all of a sudden, he starts beating up the wrestler in a way where it's like, wait a minute. You know, like, actually start giving him series of beats without weapons involved. Just giving a wrestler that does this full time the beats. And I like that. It wasn't like that. He had to pick his spots. He had to use the weapons most of the time to really get that upper hand. And it made sense for him to have a street fight match because you can do that and it comes off more believable considering a guy that wrestles all the time getting beat by a a, a mega star like a, 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 a rapper or a singer or some entertainer. You know what I'm saying? So um that was that was that was that was great to see, man. I, I definitely enjoyed that. So as you guys expected, you knew Judgment Day in the sense of Finn Balor. And Dominic was going to get involved. You knew that was going to happen. So toward the middle of the match, obviously, they run out because Bad Bunny is about to start giving out the beats. And they come out there. They jump Bad Bunny. Then Ray comes out there. He gets in the mix. He gets jumped. 
And then all of a sudden, bro, and this was a huge pop. Carlito, out of nowhere, his music hits. He runs down there in the cool gray 11s, might I add. Dude, please. I, I like the cool gray 11s. It just happened to be the number 11. We're not going to go into that. Anywho, he comes out there and a huge pop and starts giving the beats out to them, pulls out his infamous apple, spits it in their face, and people we don't think is cool, aka Dominic Mysterio, beautiful, loved it. Just them catching the beats was so, so, so great. And then, and then, Savio Vega comes out to a huge pop. <laughs> huge pop. He's at the other end of the, the entranceway, so, you know, now they're like, what's going to happen? And then Finn Balor's like, oh, this old guy, we can take care of him. And then L LWO comes out and I was like, uh-oh. And then, oh, bro, uh, it was, it was, it was fantastic, bro. It was fantastic. It was cool seeing Savio Vega hit his moves. And then LWO just start jumping them. Oh, seeing Dom get jumped by six individuals, including his dad. Chef's kiss. It damn near was. It felt like six individuals. It was great. That was great. Crowd's going crazy. Crowd's going insane. And then, then the fact that uh, during the match, Damian Priest ends up kicking the leg, uh, the, his leg, kicking the, the ring post. So they start focusing on the leg and the ankle. And Bad Bunny trying to take him out. You know what I'm saying? And the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful chair shots over and over and over. The Damian Priest chef's kiss. Amazing. And then hitting him with a Spanish fly to end it all. One, two, three. Great. Fantastic. As I expected, it was the match of the night. Crowd was very lit. And it was going to make the next match a little bit harder to follow. But they ultimately were able to pull it off. And that is the Usos and Solo versus Riddle, Zayn, and Kevin Owens. Now, in this match, I had Riddle, Zane, and Owens winning, but it didn't happen. And I think they sacrificed the win for storyline reasons. And I, this match wasn't really just about, about the titles or anything. This match was solely story-driven on the Usos and Solo's dynamic, especially with Jay and Solo. And the tension was there. This, honestly, was what made the match good. The match itself was okay, enjoyable, but we've seen a rendition of this match at WrestleMania, but in my opinion, a little bit better. And it was a lot of super kicks. It was a lot of <laughs> a lot of back and forth. Um, they definitely doing, you know, working on the baby face, you know, separating Sami Zayn from uh, getting to the rest of his team members. Kevin Owens loves taking the edge of the stair um uh steel stair spot i don't know why he does that but he loves taking his head being slammed into the edge of the steps he loves that spot so that was the thing um but and shout out to matt riddle getting some good offense in when he finally got the hot tag he was taking out everybody but the story was the usos and solos relationship specifically with jay and there was one moment well, a few moments where, you know, Solo tagging himself in or whatnot because he's trying to show them how he can get the job done. And then he would tag one of them back in, Jay back in. All right, now you can finish him off. Like, it was really just on some, I'm going to show y'all I can do this and then y'all finish off the rest. Y'all need me, honestly. And I like that Roman has kind of put into his head that he's better than them. Because Solo has been the one getting the job done for Roman, not the Usos. And there was one moment in the match, and this was so, oh man, so good. There was one moment in the match where Solo, and he's coming off like this uncontrollable individual, where Solo was about to Samoan spike Jay. And he's like, yo, you about to hit me? I'm your own brother. You really about to hit me? And it only got broken up. But, you know, but it was just when it was that moment like, whoa. And there was another great moment where Solo had tagged himself in. Because Sammy's in the corner. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, Jay is about to hit him. Well, you know, he's doing the ooh so stuff in the corner. And then Solo tags himself in. And Jay get mad. 
So he tags himself back in. He's like, yo, what the fuck you doing? And I was like, this is great. This is fantastic, bro. And then there was another moment. I think Matt Riddle was in the ring and Jay was laying down. And Solo was up. And he has his thumb. He's about to hit somebody with the Samoan spike. You think he'd go to Riddle? No. He go, he's looking at Jay. And he's walking over to Jay like he's about to Samoan spike him. I was like, this is good. It gets broken up, I believe, by either Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, I'm not sure. But ultimately, ultimately, it's a situation where Solo uh, ends up tagging himself in. Matt Riddle doesn't even realize he tagged himself in. Solo hits Matt Riddle with the Samoan spike. One, two, three. And then that's it. Solo wins it for the bloodline. But even at the end, Jay still has this like, yo, what's going on? Look. Then Jimmy doesn't know. Jimmy, I don't know. He, he was definitely taking the match. A nap most of the match. Jimmy doesn't realize there's some tension here. So he thinks everything's good. And Solo, he's kind of reluctant. Like he's like this wild animal that can't really be controlled. And this is their own blood brother. So I am... I'm very interested to see what's going to happen here because the story is going to be, well, Solo was the reason y'all won. It wasn't even because of y'all. It was because of Solo. And I'm also wondering what how's Roman going to perceive this because maybe Roman's going to be like, well, y'all got to listen to Solo when I'm not around. And that's all oh, that's going to be interesting. This was one of those matches. The in-ring wrestling was okay. It was good. But the story, that is what mattered the most. And the Bloodline story had been getting stale. But this brought some life to me personally. This brought us back. Now we're getting to that, that new chapter. This brought me back. Now I'm interested. Now I want to see what's going to happen on SmackDown. I want to know now because Solo definitely was about to hit Jimmy. I mean, Jay. He, he definitely is like... He's not on the same page with them, and I want to see how this is going to play out. So I'm literally looking forward to that. Overall, the story made this match what it was. Fantastic. Still enjoyable. Looking forward to seeing what they're going to do. And the main event, Brock Lesnar versus Cody Rose. Ah, oh, this is fun. This was fucking fun. This was great. Seeing Cody go out there before the bell ring and proceeds to jump Brock Lesnar and give him the beats, hit him with chairs, hit him with stairs, the steel steps. I, I wish he would have was out there giving him more beats. It was great. I loved it. I uh, Man, that was fun. And then the match turned into what we always know it turns into with Brock Lesnar. Suplex, 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 suplex. That was it. But things got interesting. So as Cody is taking a trip to Suplex City, unfortunately, he ends up tearing off one of the top uh, turnbuckles, and it exposed the ring, like the uh, the 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 where the ring is to hold the the ropes. So he exposed it. So Cody ends up reversing it, having Brock legitimately run head first into it. And cut himself open. He's bleeding. They didn't even stop it. They didn't shy away from it because you couldn't. His face was a crimson mass. And it was glorious. This is what I mean. If blood is used sparingly in certain situation, it comes off so much better. And I think he legitimately, he didn't have to blade. I think he just, he may have bladed, but it looked like he, looked, Brock is one of those type of guys, he will legitimately bust himself open. I, anytime I've seen Brock, Brock bleed, he usually just runs his head into something. And he just ends up busting himself open. So either way, that was a fantastic visual. Then Cody starts going on the offense, hitting the uh, the cutters, start hitting it. Bro, when he started hitting him with the crossroads, he hit him with two. I was hoping he went for a third. I was like, oh, please go for a third. But Brock kicked out, bloody mess, crowd going crazy. I'm going crazy on the stream. Bro, uh, Dove going crazy on the stream. Steve going crazy. This was so fun. And then he gets hit with the F5. I knew Cody was going to kick out. Then he gets put into the, the Kamora lock. Now, here's where the ending could, some people could feel some type of way. He's in a Kimura Rock. Cody can't get out. So, 
Cody can't lift up Brock like the traditional spot. Let me lift somebody up, deadlift them. So what he does, I mean, he kind of uses his leverage and outsmarts Cody. And as Cody pinned to uh, uh, outsmarts Brock and Cody, while in the lock, has Brock Lesnar's shoulders pinned to the mat. Riff, one, two, three. And that's how he wins. He outsmarted him. Now, I get why they did it, because you're trying to protect Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar, he wants to... It's, he lost, but he didn't lose in a traditional pin. He lost with a roll-up uh, a roll up pin, in a sense. Like it was, he, just, he was able to outsmart him and use his leverage, and that's how he beat him. Brock kind of injured himself by running... You know, well, Cody you know, maneuvered him into the, the ring post area uh, with the exposed turnbuckle. So he did that. But it was more so a win of, it wasn't a win like, oh, Cody hit him with three co uh, crossroads and Brock's, you know, got pinned in the mat one, two, three, bloody. It was Cody was in a precarious situation, knew where he was, used his leverage, was able to pin Brock Lesnar one, two, three, rolled out the ring and walked up the ramp. Selling his arm. So would I have liked a decisive win like Cody got the win by beating him one, two, three in the ring? Yes. I would like that. I think that would have been cool um, in, instead of the situation we got. But ultimately, Cody got the win here. And I'm okay with that. They needed Cody to have the win there. The way you want it, you can debate on it. But, I, you know, they still gave him the win. It was a fun, fun match. The only thing is, are they going to continue this feud? Because Brock definitely didn't get beat traditionally. And if they do continue this feud... I don't want Brock to win. You would have to two old Brock. So I, I don't know. I think maybe they should move on. I, I don't want Cody to be in this World Heavyweight Championship tournament. Even if he does lose, he shouldn't be going for another title unless it's Romans. That's my opinion. So I don't know what they do. They may. And I could see them running it back. Doing like a Seth Rollins thing where he may beat him t uh, multiple times. Honestly, if they do run it back, which I don't want. But if they do run it back, Cody has to win in a decisive manner. That's that's the only way. But I hope they don't do that. I hope they find someone fresh or or start. I mean, SummerSlam is a while away. And I don't even know if they're going to have Roman drop the title at SummerSlam. So, um, I don't know. We're, we're going to see what, he, what they do with him. As long as they keep him out the World Heavyweight Championship Tournament, bro, I don't want him in there. Even if he doesn't win it, he does not need to be going for that title. He needs to be going for Roman's. And he said it on SmackDown. The story is not done. I'm coming for Roman. Keep that going. Find a way to keep that going, damn it. So, I don't know. But overall, backlash for me. I gave this show, after thinking about it, I gave it an 8.5 out of 10. Uh, I would have gave it a little bit more points, depending on how they ended it. I probably would have gave it a 9 if that last match would have ended a little bit differently. Um, but overall, 8 out of 10 show. Crowd was a 10 out of 10. Definitely did their thing. Shout out to the Puerto Rican fans out there. You guys were amazing. But 8 out of 10 show, really good backlash. I don't even know when's the last time we can say a backlash was a good pay-per-view. Because usually backlash is trash. So the fact that it was this good, man, testaments to Triple H. And you got to give some credit to Vince. I'm sure he had some input in this show. But overall, they did their thing on the show. This was fantastic. And I'm actually looking forward to seeing what's going to happen on Monday Night Raw. So comment down below. Let me know. Did you guys enjoy the show? What was your favorite match of the show? And where do you guys think stories and feuds are going to lead to going into uh, uh, to Monday Night and SmackDown and into the next pay-per-view? Let me know what y'all think. But I appreciate all love and support. Road to 150K. And I'm still here on the speed of YouTube Wrestling Champ of the World. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.